Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and this is part one of me printing the sleeper simulant from Destiny. I think this is gonna be cool. I hope you follow along. Are you ready? Go! Ah, welcome back. Here's something interesting. The sleeper simulant modeled by my friend Kirby over at my mini factory has always been that gun that I've wanted to print. I've printed the Thorn, I've printed the Hawkmoon, and those are cool and all, but the sleeper simulant looks insane. Plus, Kirby did a fantastic job modeling this gun, and I thought, I want to try this. And I did try it before. I tried it but when I knew far, far less about 3D printing, and I didn't turn out very good at all. So I wanted to give it another shot. What I find very interesting about my ability to give it a shot is that I have 12 or so different 3D printers and a variety of different filaments to print with. This is a good chance for me to try filaments with printers to get some pieces printed and get myself a sleeper simulant. Before I started printing, I did have to figure out which of my printers I could use in this exercise. So let's go down the list. We'll start here in my office. The GMAX 1.5 XT, my first one, that is currently out of rotation because I'm rehabilitating the printer and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it as good as new. So it's out of the rotation, I'm not currently using it. The GMAX 1.5, XT Plus is a fantastic printer and will be valuable at printing any of the pieces I want. The Robo 3D R1 Plus, I have high aspirations for. It's a good printer, I've heard, and I've printed a couple things on it. I'm still reviewing it, but I'm going to add it to this rotation for this model. The XYZ DaVinci Pro has yet to be powered on and I just haven't had the time to get it going, so it won't be a part of this rotation. The Jumpstart printer from Matter Hackers may end up being a printer that I use for this, but for now, it's sitting off to the side just waiting for me to plug it in. The 3D Gents 1 printer should be able to handle this no problem, and it has the build area that can accommodate any of these models, so the 1 will definitely be in rotation. The Zortrax M200 will not be spoken of any further in this video. Zortrax has a zero tolerance policy for anything weapon related to be made on their printers. Therefore, the Zortrax will not be a part of this build. The Lulzbot Mini has a big enough build area and is capable of printing anything here. However, I don't have a lot of PLA left and I may have to attempt to use the hips three millimeter filament. The Dremel 3D Idea Builder is going to be good for some of these. Some of the parts like the mag and the mag holder back and front are small enough for its build area. The rest of the print, the rest of the models themselves are too big for the build area and I won't be able to use the Dremel 3D Idea Builder for that. So I'll give it a try for those models that will fit. The Flashforge Creator Pro has a similar build area to the Dremel 3D Idea Builder, but it doesn't have a filament fan because it's one of the older ones. And a lot of these pieces require some active cooling as they're being printed. The Simi CNC Orion printer is currently in need of calibration after it yanked it out of calibration. So I'm gonna have to calibrate that printer. It looks like it's capable of printing these things and we'll We'll see if I can get it in the mix. About the sleeper simulant, Kirby modeled it in 10 different pieces. You've got pieces A, B, C, D, E, and F. You have the mag, you have the mag holder front, you have the mag holder back, and you have the sight. Of course you have the sight. What else are you gonna look through? That's not that many pieces. 10 pieces for a gun build isn't that big. Thorn had roughly that many. Hawkmoon has more. However, these pieces are very intricate and complex and frankly really freaking hard to print. Now that I've told you what I want to print and the files it contains, I'm gonna go through my process and tell you what I've done so far. I'm calling this video a part one because I'm not gonna do it all in one video. I'm taking a page out of James from X Robots book and doing things multi-part. I've always tried to get everything into one video. In fact, I hate letting video sit, and so it's not uncommon for me to shoot video, edit video, and publish video 
all within the span of hours. And you're gonna see how far I've gotten so far and what I plan to do for parts two, three, seven, 40, 99, take your pick. We'll see how far we can go with this. I'm here with my 3D Gents 1 and it's because this is where I printed my first part. This is part A. This is part A of the gun. The 3D Gents did a decent job. You can see it messed up right there on this span, but uh, otherwise it did, it did okay. And it was freaking hard to get this out of this machine. It was failing all over the place. And it wasn't until I added some supports in certain areas that it allowed itself to complete. For some reason, this build is really tough in that some of these angles that are printing like to curl up like crazy pants. Also, part A had an issue. So on the parts, these square blocks on either side have custom supports that Kirby has modeled into the model that break away easily so that the slicing engine doesn't have to take them into account. The issue is on A, the supports weren't as far down as the bottom of the model. So when you brought the model onto the build plate, these custom supports for these square blocks didn't actually come down to the build plate. So they were essentially printing in midair and that's not very supportive. I did email Kirby and Kirby said, I got this and he sent me a fixed file within minutes. It was crazy. So here's A, A was printed on the 3D Gents 1. It was printed at 208 degrees centigrade with a 75, 70, 65 tapered down temperature bed. I used magic goo to stick it to the ceramic bed and I printed it at 65 millimeters per second. It was printed with the 3D Gents no name PLA. And I, I don't know who 3D Gents goes through for their PLA, but I thought it did a wonderful job and I would, well, use this again. What you see here on the 3D Gents one, this is part B, this is part B. And part B is printed with the all professional 3D purple PLA, printed at the same temperature settings as the 3D Gents one PLA. And the reason I went to the all professional 3D PLA on the 3D Gents is because on part B, it was having a particularly awful time trying to print with the 3D Gents 1 PLA. I switched over to the all professional 3D purple PLA and then for some reason it kept jamming and it would print in mid air and it was so frustrating and I found the problem. The problem is this right here. This is a filament cleaner and then there's a tube that feeds over to the hot end and the extrusion assembly. The problem was this tube was causing the all professional 3D filament to bind because of its texture on the outside. So I went to the kitchen cupboard and I found some Wesson cooking oil and I loaded the filament cleaner with Wesson cooking oil and then I fed the filament through and this is what came out. I thought it came out pretty darn good considering what I had to go through to get it. It did, it did mess up. If you look, it's stringy here because right here it's missing a piece. This piece, it fell over. Yeah, this is tough. This is a really tough one to print. I also printed it on a raft and I used some extra support material. Should we see if the raft comes off? Uh, it's trying. God, this is kind of scary. Doing, it's doing a good job. This was sliced with Simplify 3D, and I do like the rafts that Simplify 3D creates. I'm gonna say that right now. Oh, it's coming off. It's coming off. Okay, pieces are going into the garbage right below me. That's awesome. I just don't wanna break it, you know? It took forever. With all the failures I had, easily more than 24 hours of printing. Okay. That came off. It's got some supports. Got some support material right here. I'll try to. Oh, this is tough getting this off. There we go. Okay. And there's some support material right here. I think you can see that, right? Yeah. Hey, it's coming off. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> 
Oh, I know this print isn't perfect, but oh, I'm so satisfied with it because it took forever. Oh, forever. Okay, there's the piece that messed up right there. Uh, let's see, oh, there's some support here. It looks like this piece right here separated just a little bit. That's easily glued. Um, oh, the custom supports on the box. Let's see if I can wiggle that off. Oh, I'm scared. Come on, come on. Oh, I'm putting way more pressure on it than I want to. This is, okay, let's try the other one. Okay, see how that removed? Good job, Kirby. Oh boy. Oh wait, okay, support. Ha-ha! Oh, <laughs> success. Okay, let's see how it matches up. This is B, let's see how it matches up with A. Ready? Oh wait, the other way. Okay, the other way. Oh, look at that, it matches up. That's kinda cool. I know it's not perfect, but I'm, I'm kind of digging the multicolor. Okay, well, let's keep going. Now we're on the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus, and this is printing part C with Maker Geek's Who Blue PLA, and it's doing a phenomenal job. The Maker Geek's does pretty well. It, it's looking okay. The, it's, there's a little bit of stringing going on. Um, here, let me zoom in. There we go. You can see it's doing a good job. If you look right here, the supports that Kirby built are, are handling it really well. Looks like there might be a little bit of stringing on the inside and maybe I missed a place at putting support, but, but it's looking okay. I did see that behind there, something did fall apart. So I don't know what happened there, but but the important thing is this piece is printing and it should be done before the morning and I'm awfully excited. Well, let's skip over part D because the GMAX did print this out. This is part E and I tweeted a picture of this because it printed flat like this. It was, it was just like that on the build plate and it did this crazy, crazy incline with no support whatsoever. And it did, it turned out okay. You can kind of see under there, it's a little bit rough, but I'll take rough over failure at any point. I did forget to put some supports right here. Oops, and it looked like, let's see, I did forget to put some supports right here. It did okay. It did okay right here without the supports. Um, this is, I would consider this a success. You can kind of see how this is starting to curl up. And that's what I was dealing with on this part right here. But thankfully the GMAX is awesome. And in fact, this, <laughs> this is the 3D Gents 1 blue PLA on the GMAX printer. Well, that's not too bad. Oh, one thing about this, I did have to send this through the Microsoft NetFab model fixing service. It did have some geometry errors that that I needed to fix before I could slice it and simplify 3D. And then I was able to slice it and print it and it came out extraordinarily well. Before the GMAX, I did try to print part C here on the Lulzbot and it didn't turn out very well. I was using the Lulzbot eSun hips filament because I didn't have enough of the Matter Hackers Blue PLA left to print on the Lowell's bot. I was starting to get some stringing and then the thing in the back fell over so I just considered it a failure and turned it off. Poop. I need to get some more PLA for this machine like stat. So if anybody has any three millimeter PLA laying around that they don't need, feel free to send it my way. I was trying for part D on the Robo and I'm super close but this is another model with an issue where those custom supports for the square blocks aren't quite as low as the rest of the model. So when I bring the model to the floor and simplify 3D, there's space in between. And, and this is the problem it causes. Here you go, here's an up close look. Look at that. So there's this and it's got, uh, it's got support material on the bottom. So it should, look like this, but because the model doesn't go all the way down and the support material is what's holding it, it just kind of falls over. The rest of the model was looking really fantastic. And other than this sweet, sweet ball of filament, I think the Robo was gonna do a good job. I was using the PLA that Robo sent 
with the printer and it it looks like really good filament. I wish <laughs> I wish this would have worked. I was really looking forward to this and I mean it was it was having some some issues, but I like this machine and I like this filament. So I'm going to get this working and I'm going to continue to try to do this piece on the Robo. Robo sent a stick of glue for their build plate and that's typical, but it didn't work worth a crap on this machine and I don't know why. I use this. This is magic goo. Preet over at Design Box 3D sent me this magic goo along with the 3D Gents 1 thinking that this would be good on the 3D Gents 1 build plate and it was. It works really, really well. Um, it worked really, really well in the Robo R1 Plus. So, hey, magic goo, you, you make a good product. And so far on two printers, it's done the job. The Robo needs a host because I don't have an LCD screen for it. So originally I used this, the Matter Hackers T10 tablet. And it, it connects up to the Robo, it sees the Robo and the Matter Control Touch software starts slicing the model, but then it crashes hard and the Robo won't seem to print this model with this, the T10. I did talk to Matter Hackers and they said that there's some updates in the works that's going to address this crashing issue, but for now, because it cannot slice these models, I can't use this. When the tablet didn't work, I tried this, and Preet sent me this as well. This is the Element from Printer, P-R-I-N-T-R, -N -N Printer, and the Element is a wireless-ish solution. It's connected to the printer via USB and you give it USB power. It's supposed to provide a cloud solution for slicing and controlling the printer and printing things, but I could not get this thing to work. Man, it kept saying it was offline and it wouldn't recognize the robo. Um, the tech support that I was able to get through to just regurgitated what was on their support pages, so I didn't find that very useful at all. I'm still gonna give this a try because it seems interesting, but for right now, the element didn't work for me, so I can't use it. What I did use on the Robo for that model was my laptop with Simplify 3D tethered. I was going to use this. This is the Sprout from HP, and Chris Perillo hooked me up with this machine. It does 3D scanning. I thought, well, hey, maybe it can run Simplify 3D and I can run it for the Robo. It's gonna work, but then Simplify 3D, uh, I exhausted all my licenses. So I sent an email off to them and they graciously granted me a license so that I can have Simplify 3D on my Windows platform and that's what I'm going to use for the Robo to get that piece printed. Finally, we move on to the Dremel 3D Idea Builder and the the mag originally had some geometry errors and I I sent that off to Kirby, so he's gonna fix that. But I, I the Microsoft uh, NetFab service was able to fix it up and there it is. The, the detail is wonderful. This is the Dremel 3D Idea Builder using Boots Super Premium PLA. And I gotta be honest with you, that Boots filament is wonderful on that machine. Just look at the detail. It came out great. It came out wonderful. I really like the boots on this machine, so I'm, I'm gonna continue to hopefully use that. But this is the mag, and it was fixed via NetFab. Not too bad. Here's the other one, look at that. This is piece F, and it came out, well, it came out okay. There's <laughs> some problems right here. Oops, I guess it didn't quite do that part. Uh, there's some stringing here because Darn it, I should have put in some support in some places. But other than those two things, this turned out really well. And again, it shows the power of that Dremel 3D Idea Builder. It's a wonderful machine and it's completely underappreciated for its powers. It does wonderful things with 3D printing and I love, love, love that machine. Granted, it'll do even better if I configure the print right. Dang it. Even some of these pieces, even though this has a problem here, I may not reprint it. We'll see. I mean, I may reprint it. I just, I don't, some, I just don't, I don't know if I care enough to reprint it. This is good enough. Plus, if I meet up with Bill Duran, he's gonna show me all the secrets of prop building and he'll probably be like, oh, here's how you fix this, do, 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 and he'll fix it. Finally, with the idea builder is the site and the mag holder front and the mag holder back, and it's a beautiful disaster. 
Oh no! The site, it turned out, well, it didn't turn out okay at all. It's very stringy and uh, it'll just, dang it, okay. But look at the supports for the site. It turned out okay. Let's see if I can get these off the, I've got build tech on the build plate. There we go. So the support should just come, look how easy the supports come off. So if it printed right, if this printed right, this would look really good, but not now. And uh, yeah, that's what we're left with there. That's the mag front holder, back holder thing. It's just spaghetti, essentially. Here's what happened when I started the idea builder on that build, I walked away and I went to work. Uh, that's not good. You should always, always make sure your first layer looks awesome or else you're just gonna pay for it in the end like this. All right, so where does that leave us? A is printed, B is printed, C is printing currently, D is waiting on a fix from Kirby, E is printed, F is printed, the mag is printed, the site, mag holder front, and mag holder back are all not printed right. So it looks like we do, we have a couple more to print. We do have to wait for some fixes to come from Kirby. I did email Kirby and he wanted me to make sure and tell you, my audience, that anytime you find a model online, especially with one of his at My Mini Factory, and you find a problem with the model, send him an email right away. He is more than happy to fix the models that have problems with it. He tries to get them printed and they should print just fine, but if you find a problem when you're slicing the model or slicing the model part, then email him right away and he would love to fix it for you. Also, I think I'm gonna try again on the Dremel 3D Idea Builder. I get the feeling I had my settings right, but I think the first layer just didn't stick right. So when I started, I'm gonna stick around to watch that first layer and make sure everything lays down just as it should. Well, that's it for part one. I hope you found that useful and I hope it gives you an idea of what I need to go through to print these things. Uh, it's, it's nice not having to try and get everything ready for one video, and it's nice to be able to part it out a bit. I think that in the future, if I have to do these bigger prints, I'll do these multi-part videos. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and let me know. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about anything. Throw me a dollar or so via patreon.com if you want to financially support the channel and financially support some of these things that I'm doing. I'm never gonna require it. And as always, I'm gonna do this for free as long as I can. However, please, if you see me online, throw me a social high five. And speaking of high fives, as always, high five. He's Joel Telly and he's printing 3D like some Pokemon, a gun from Destiny. And when you call him a nerd, he'll stand up proudly because he's packing some heat from his YouTube family. He can review printers till he falls to the floor. Then he'll give them away like Oprah in 04. There's the Wombot, Volsbot, GMAX XT, then a break for Red Bull and Lobo's Taco Crispy. Printed koozie in his hand for his drink. He sets up his GoPro and prints out a bender bang. So send him a dollar to put in his head or a self address envelope for a sticker instead. There's a nerd vlog on boxings and Q's and A's and he'll open your mail every single Friday. And of course you can't forget that pancake bot and filaments phonic fees and Joel's your little side. And they printed this printer at Holodex Studio like Lando Calrissian and Freeze Dried Han Solo. So show your support on Patreon or subscribe and as always, high five.